I'm gonna get you all. I'm all up close. You're all up yeah, on that you, one. Why don't you back yeah, that up? Yeah, we'll go ahead and back that up. Back that up. Okay. Hi everyone, how are you guys tonight? You guys, we're back live. I've had two weeks off because we were traveling. We I did an event in Southern California. Um, and then we stayed and had a little family vacation. And so we are finally back. Um, was it really a vacation? It was not a vacation because we did theme parks. And I don't care what anybody says. Theme parks are not a vacation for parents. We walked more than I've walked in years. But uh, we hit every ride in two days. Like everything. We got yeah, it all man. done. The kids were great. Um, thank you to everyone who came to the event. We had a great time, you guys. The energy was good. Everybody was just creating, and it just felt, it just felt really good. It was a fun time. So well, thank, thank you, you to everyone who came. Thank yeah, you. including Sean. Uh, Sean and my boys were there. Oh. They worked at the event with me, and they were a huge help. I don't usually get to have my family with me, but it was nice to be able to go home at the end of the class and have them all there. And then to be able to bark orders at Sean and he couldn't Wait. say anything to me. What? It's really nice. Yeah, it's like it's, it, it does get tough for me to be tight-lipped. So we are back here tonight and I'm going to do some painting. Oh, hey, Paula. Hey, Paula. Paula was at the event. Paula does. Um, but I wanted to tell you guys, I got information actually just today on the next, <laughs> the next <laughs> event that I'm going to be doing. Um, and I knew this one was coming up, but it's also going to be at the new uh, Redesign with Prima store in Temecula, California, so Southern California. Um, it's going to be in combination with Wiseau Paint. And this one's going to be for their retailers and also for the public. And it's going to be the first weekend in March, which is the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th are going to be the dates. Through the 30th, one of those yeah, days. the 30 day <laughs> But this one, you guys, will be more of a retreat style, meaning that lodging is also available, that everybody will be staying together. Prima owns a ranch down there, which is where we stayed when we were down there. Uh, so they have a ranch that has a vineyard on it. It's a beautiful property of acreage in Southern California. The weather was beautiful. Uh, so everyone will be able to stay together. We're going to make meals together. We're going to paint together. It's going to be more of a retreat style. So I think it's going to be really cool. It's also going to have another guest there teaching along with me. And I'm super excited because she's someone who I admire her painting also. Uh, but I'll be with Chelsea from Apple Blossom Way. And those tickets should be coming available in the next couple days. So as soon as they do, watch my page and I will post a link to those. Paula and was already after them. Paula, yep. Yep, there will be an option that has uh, lodging with it. And there's also an option for people who don't need the lodging and just want to come to the daytime events. Uh, for just the class tickets too. So I think that'll give you a couple options. Um, and that's what I know so far. So stay tuned and I'll have information. But again, that first weekend in March with Redesign with Prima and Wise Owl, me and Chelsea from Apple Blossom Way. And yeah, that's, I'll get those up in the next, hopefully, hopefully this coming week, we'll have a ticket link to, to share with you guys. So I do want to throw out like a special, almost unrelated thank you to Paula for uh, her Disney logic. Yes. That, that definitely, there were a few that I wasn't able to use because there were characters missing that would, I would really enjoy doing, but. Paula, my kids wanted to do that so bad, but we never saw the characters. Well, we weren't, we weren't. They were in the parade. Them. We weren't seeking them out either because yeah. we wanted to do the rides more. So we didn't seek out like the character meets, you know. You can look those up on the schedule. We just didn't do that part. Um, but that you did that was some fun information and it helped us. We were able to navigate the park and keep our weights down and everything. So it was a good experience. All right, you guys. So we're going to paint on this and um, I show you guys pictures, but I'm going to catch you up to where I am right now. I'm going to show you what the next step on this were. So in our, in our first video, I laid on my base layer, which had... Uh, the blue on the trim, I ha and I put this white on the doors. Um, that's actually, my colors are actually going to be the reverse of that. So everywhere that you, that I originally put the white is going to be blue. But I was thinking of the layering process. When I go through and I distress to show the layers underneath, what do I want to show underneath? So that's what I started with. Yes, um, sir. <laughs> Question in the back. <laughs> um, I almost feel like a press secretary. Anyway, um, 
for the event. Sorry to yes. take it back a little bit. Where is this going to be it's again? It's going to be in Temecula, California, and it's going to be at the Redesign with Prima store, which is where I taught this month. And those were the first classes to be taught at the location. So it was a good experience to get in and see how it functioned, but they're also going to be opening up another part of the building. So it's going to be double the size. Um, and then we're going to have lodging for this one too. So at, at the ranch. So this was kind of our trial run, like see how everything flowed, what the layout was, uh, the, the store is brand new. And so it was a really, it was a good experience. We learned a lot. We got, you know, figured out a lot of things and this time. And so same location in Temecula, California at the redesign with Prima store. I do want to say one thing because what I noticed was that I got a lot, a lot, a lot of requests for, you know, everybody wants a, uh, an event to come to their location. And the biggest issue with making an, a paint event is, is always venue. So what Redesign with Prima did by opening up this store is they gave us a venue that we can come teach at. And it takes that out as a, as a component of trying to plan an event. Because if I try to plan it on my own and I've got to go out and say rent a hotel conference room or you know whatever venue I choose, that is going to be an added expense. And so the ticket price balloons from there because it almost becomes like planning a wedding um, to put together an event like that. Once you, you know, you got to figure out travel and lodging and venue and food. And um, so Redesign with Prima took all of that out. So I know that everybody's not necessarily in California, but it makes it so you can, can have these experiences without having to add that component to planning an event, if that makes sense. Um, for me, I don't teach locally because I work from my home. And so I don't open my home up for, for events. That would be weird, um, for safety reasons too. Uh, it just wouldn't work. And so it means I would always have to have a venue. I always have to partner with a venue and adding venue is a huge, huge expense for an event. So they've solved that problem. So it really gives us an opportunity. So if you notice, I'm going to probably be teaching there pretty regularly because it solved that problem of a venue and it gave it gives us all our materials and supplies are on site there it's made for painting uh, we're going to have a surf prep sander there we're going to have uh, there's tables there it's set up for this type of thing to be done there all the time um, you know i've done events in like hotel venues and you you cannot get paint on anything anything or they will charge you so this is nice because it was like oh if you drop paint on the floor it's a painting venue oh here hold on let me show facebook so <laughs> yeah, you can't look floor. like this yeah, yeah no matter what yeah it just it just worked really well they set it up for us to use it like that. now signing up stuff like that that's few, that's coming yes, out in the future it, this is just i literally just got the you know some of the final information today and so this is the first it's coming out to even talk about it. I will be posting as soon as that ticket link is up and we're hoping to get it up in this next week, get a ticket link up where our tickets are available uh, with pricing. Again, I told you one set of pricing will have lodging because it's going to be more of a retreat style where we stay in the houses on the redesign with Prima ranch. Um, we cook together, we socialize, you know, uh, people can sip wine and, and there will be social Sip. aspects to it too. Sip. Well, I don't drink, so I'm going to be. I just mean watching, in general. Watching Sip. All, yeah. all you guys get so. Chug. No. Yeah. Sip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Hot off the press. And then, so there will be an option that has lodging for everyone who wants to travel in. And then there's also going to be an option that's just the day tickets too. So that's kind of cool. You can choose that. Okay. Do you guys want to paint tonight or what? I'm thinking that about it. A lot of I mean, I don't want to personally. But I really wanted to cover that. I also want to say about events. Uh, we did talk about trying to incorporate in the future an online option. Again, these were the first classes we taught out of this venue um, and figuring out an online option. So I it may not be this coming one, but I it is something that I would like to figure out in the future. There's a whole bunch of caveats to that too. Do we give a materials list and everybody has to go get their own materials? It really isn't practical to ship out a box because even then for a you know Christmas ornament project, it might cost you $200 in materials to make sure you have everything, you know, like stocking at like a workshop with people might already have some stuff. Anyway, uh, it, there's a lot that goes into that to figuring out how an online option would work. 
So that's something we want to figure out in the future too. So I also just, sorry to keep interrupting you, Tally Roll. I just want to say hi to everybody out there. There's a lot of hellos coming over, but there's a lot of info that's going out. Yeah. I just didn't want to interrupt while it was being spewed. Thank you guys. Sorry about that. I know it's a lot of talking, but I'm, I'm excited for this because it's a huge opportunity to be able to teach in-person classes and solve that venue problem. And the venue functioned really nicely. We had a great time. Um, you know, the people who were there, you guys can share what that experience was. And then to open it up with the lodging to the, the houses and the land. It's a beautiful property. It's... Shout out to the Columborn kids. <laughs> yeah. My... Hey, am I the only one that came home and I just want to just start calling my house a ranch? My kids, I... my kids worked their tails off and they were a oh, they did. big help. Okay, so what I did here, you guys, when I first started this piece, the white that I used here, I'm using Wiesel paint. And this white is Antique Villa. It looks more like a pure white, but it actually has some ivory undertones to it. Um, and then I did add a little bit of a color called Renovation to some of the corners. And I'm gonna do that step for you guys. I'm just gonna add a little bit of color uh, to show you how I darkened up some of these corners. It's just gonna be part of the layering process. It looks kind of terrible now. So over my antique villa that we applied last week, I took some of my renovation and I um, tapped it on. And then I'm going to tap a little bit of my salt wash into that. And by adding it over the top of the salt wash, it's not as embedded as mixing it into the paint. And that way when I flake all this off, because I am going to just stretch through these layers and this will be smooth when I'm done, but I'm chunking it up right now. Um, it will not be as embedded and it will have a tendency to flake. So, so all I do is I, I'm using a natural bristle brush. I'm stippling my paint, which is just kind of a tapping motion. And then I just dab my brush into my salt wash and I pick up some of that powder, which is a, a salt wash is a um, texture agent. It thickens your paint up, adds texture to it. And I'm going to stick it into that paint and then I'm gonna kind of sandwich it in with another layer of paint. And it gives you a different texture than um, mixing the salt wash in your paint, actually stirring it in. I also find that it takes a little bit less salt wash to get texture like this, so I can tap it in. Yes, I do have some loss down here. Um, you can take and gather this. I'll show you what I mean. Man, whoever's at the door is very persistent. I could gather this, what I'm losing when I tap that salt wash. That's what and, I do for my hair. And I just brushed it onto a paper plate and I can put it back into the container. So you do have some loss by applying the salt wash like that, um, but you actually use less than putting it, stirring it in with your paint. So this is how I darkened these corners, and I'm gonna go through a few steps on this tonight with you guys to get, get it kind of caught up to where I am. Okay, so I just went around the edges because when I talked to you guys about this original design, it looks terrible right now. Paula, you know that they, they always go through an ugly process, right? And you're going to question it along the way. And, good attitude. Good attitude. Um, but I plan to add a transfer to the center of these doors. And I had two that I was considering. This is one possibility, which is called white engraving. And this is my second possibility, which is called antique damask. Ooh, I got a heck of a paragraphical question there. We were kind of leaning towards the antique damask, but I think I'll I think I'll decide once I have my paint all done which of these I like better. <laughs> what? Sorry. So this laugh is not for the long question, which was uh, someone was asking. It flew by, but someone was asking if you've ever run into a situation where you've done a custom piece, had it delivered, and the customer didn't pay. Oh my god! Um, and then we're rolling into Fireball June. Hi, Fireball June. By the way. Um, Hey, Fireball June. How's your mom you? doing? That's oh. what made me laugh. Oh, my mom. Yeah, my mom's uh, probably not happy with me right now. She watched <laughs> my dog while we were gone. I don't think she'll ever watch my dog again. Poor Ginger. <laughs> so, yeah, she, Ginger was not feeling good when we were gone. I don't know. She's such a nervous dog. And I don't know if she if she was eating their dog's food or what, but I don't know. Unless she, she was asking about Sheila's mom. Either one. Yeah. I don't know. Um, okay, so great question. I'm going to paint. I'm going to do this door here while we talk, and I'm actually going to be doing some blending on here. So my next step after I darkened those corners up is I don't want white. My doors are not going to be white. They're actually going to be blue. So I'm going to put the blue on here. I do need to scoot this back a little bit, and we're going to work on this door. 
I'm gonna sho shove this rag in here because these doors don't have the latches, so they want to tap, and it's super annoying. Yeah. I'm gonna shove that rag in there so it won't sit there and clank. Okay. The hey, Sheila, it's fine. Mom to mom, it's okay. Whoever's mom, how's everybody's mom doing today? But the question about um, customers not paying. Oh, I can't even imagine. I've not had that. Knock on wood, man. Um, but. Here's a couple things that I would do to uh, present, prevent that. Number one, I require a 50% deposit up front when I take an order. And that means that they're financially committed to that order. This color that I'm using is Graphic Slate from Wise Owl. And I'm gonna brush this on, but I'm not worrying about getting full coverage. Like here, some of my white is peeking through, some of the blue might peek through. I'm not going to worry about getting full coverage, digging it into all those crevices. Um, okay, so I do require that deposit up front, which means they're financially committed, and I will not deliver it to you unless it is paid in full. It doesn't go on a truck. It doesn't go in the back of my truck unless that balance is paid in full because I'm protecting myself. Now, if they want to see it before they pay in full, they're welcome to come to me um, and take a look at it. but. I do require that it be paid in full to prevent that. I also have a contract and my contract is not perfect, but there are a lot of things I've added since I started painting. Um, so have a contract with everybody that you do business with. Man, if anybody knows about contracts going bad, it's me. And, um, and my contract probably doesn't even prevent everything because there's still things that I am adding. Um, so think of what your worst case scenarios could be, put them in a contract. Um, and even that probably won't prevent everything. All right, this next color is, um, I, I took river rock and I added a little bit of vintage duck egg just to lighten it up. And I'm gonna work this into that graphic slate. So here's one thing I'll say when you're doing blending, um, texture is your friend. Texture will hide a lot of imperfections in your blending. So I don't even have to make it look perfect on here and it's gonna look pretty darn close because that texture is gonna hide any flaws. So Chris is the one that asked the question about the custom piece and yeah. she said thank you. I hope that was helpful. I know, um, you know, was this my brush I wanted? Yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine that that situation but uh i don't know <laughs> I, I hope that was somewhat helpful because I, I mean man my heart goes out to you because i know that there's tough situations with customers um you know it does say also my contract says that all uh custom work the sales are final and it explains that there's risks and the outcome and you know of course i'll work with a customer because my reputation is everything to me I'll work with them to make sure they're happy with their project. But you can't make me paint a dresser in fluorescent blue and then get mad when it's not exactly what you wanted. You know, I show them pictures along the way and stuff and there's just risk in, in custom work. Um, but knock on wood, I've not had a customer just all out not pay. There have been times I have to change colors or, you know, fix something or whatever. And we just, we just work it out. Glad to hear it, Sheila. Sorry. It's about her mom, close to her mission. Sheila, that's amazing. That's amazing. Sorry, I stepped away to deal with the dinner inside. Oh my gosh, that makes me so happy. Or supper, depending on what part All of the right, country guys, you're in. I'm trying to, um, this is vintage duck egg from Wiesel, and I'm trying to put it on this plate, and it's in it's in this FIFO bottle. I've told you guys this before. I won't buy these again. It's, our, it's clogged. They're because, your favorite. Yeah. It's clogged. <laughs> Clogged like my sink was clogged today. Ah, oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> Until you start a new construction company? Too soon? <laughs> Too soon? All right, and this is vintage duck egg, and I'm going to add a little bit of white in the center, too, just to make this a kind of a light spot in here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfectly even because I've got some nice texture on here. So all I did was dip my brush for my vintage duck egg into a little bit of this this is ivory from Wiesel and I'm just kind of giving myself a little highlight in the center there 
Okay. Sheila's asking, did you see somewhere where you were going to do another Moonlight dresser? Did you see that somewhere? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't. Squirrel. I'm trying to think where that would have been. <laughs> I don't think I have any, I don't have any plans for one. I'm trying to think what, what you would have seen that had that on there. Okay, and then, remember I told you that my doors are going to be blue, but my trim, I'm thinking I want it to be white. Now, don't be surprised if I paint this white and I decide after I'm done that I'm like, huh, I think I want this blue, but I'm thinking all of this trim outlining the doors will go to white. And I'm gonna brush on, this is Ivory from Wise Owl, but I'm not gonna dig it into all that texture. I want some of that blue to kind of stay exposed. Next week when we paint this piece, we will go through and we're going to distress through and I'm going to take all these layers back down. So everything that we've done that we've been building up, you're going to see me tear it back down again. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila really pays attention. It was a picture of that dresser and then something, something redo. Um, <laughs> insert, think... insert redo. Yeah, uh, whatever. I, have, I do have a dresser with some scenery coming up, but I can't tell you about it yet. I'm looking at it right now. It's not a it's not a night scene, but it does have some scenery on it. Um, I'm gonna take this. Do I want to take the drawer out? Well, first of all, let me paint around the edge of this door. You need to keep your drawers on. <laughs> well, I'm thinking I want to take that out so that I don't get uh, white on it. So that was a really easy blend. The only thing harder than um, a, a messy finish is doing a nice clean finish. So doing textured finishes, um, a little bit of layering, all that I think is kind of a is kind of a easier than doing really clean, smooth finishes. Clean, smooth finishes are harder because you can see every flaw in it. Okay, and I'm gonna come here because my brushes are kind of fat. I'm going to grab so that I can get in here and get this into that dark blue too without getting. I just need to change the size of my brush to get this really small corner so that I don't have these colors going on to each other since this is a two-tone finish. So I will use an artist brush just to get some of these areas. I am painting the hinges on this. It's going to be a kind of chippy old world finish and I want that to... Uh, include the hinges and then I'm going to take another artist brush and I'm going to do this part in the white now this will have a lot of antiquing to it with uh, color washing and waxes and stuff so you won't even notice that some of these colors are not like super pure you know if I've got the blue peeking through in some areas I actually want the blue peeking through I posted earlier on my page what my inspiration for this piece is, and it's very layered, a lot of distressing, a lot of texture, and that's kind of where I'm going with this one too. So there will be antiquing to this even after, and I'm just getting my paint layered on to right now. Okay, so I really like this door. That's a really pretty blend. I can't wait to destroy it next week with you guys. It's gonna be my favorite part. I also have something else planned for the inside, so that's why I'm leaving this unpainted. I was thinking I'd be able to pull this yeah. drawer out from underneath, but it's got a it's got a top on it, so oh. that's not happening. So much for that idea. Just the one with the clips on the. Yeah, I know where they are. Hang on, guys. We, we, yeah. Nothing weird here. We... <laughs> it has little clips in the back of the drawer. You just spilled my water. Where you did. So what I'm talking about is this little bar right here. I want to be done in the white and I don't want to get it onto that drawer. So I'm just taking the drawer out. And I also don't want to get it on my door. So I'm not brushing it into all this texture. Uh, I don't know, Sean may want to come in, but you're going to see that I can no, I want still to stay piece. Out. Well, yeah, I know you hate moving the cameras, but I'm leaving spots of the blue. And I'll do, two coats like this to make sure I get a nice clean coat of the white, but I'm going to do it leaving the blue each time. I don't want full coverage on this blue. Like I'm not going to dig it into all that molding and I'm not going to dig it into all this texture. Trying to get a... 
My Check brush is shot. my brush is not super full. Um, has enough that I can get coverage, but it's a little bit dry, so it's kind of a dry brushing over the top of that texture. Uh, not a minimalist dry brush. You know, there's different types of dry brushing. There is enough paint on here that I can cover the blue, but I'm not digging it into that texture. And then same thing down here. I want this all to be white. Oh, that's a crazy question. What's that brush you're using? These are the Klingon S50 brushes, and um, they've become probably my most used. I find that I can blend with it. I'll, sh I'll slow down and talk through a blend on this next door, too, because I was talking about other stuff on this one that I just did. Actually, maybe I'll do it on this drawer next. Um, but I'll slow it down a little bit and talk through it. But I find that I can use these brushes for blending. I can lay a coat of paint on with them. Um, I just really like using them. So these have become probably my most used brush. All right, I'm going to get the white in around here. Now, um, I'm kind of, I'm questioning myself whether I for sure want these to be white. So I'm going to, I'm going to put it on here. And if I don't like it, I can always put oh, the we'll blue see back next over week. top. Next we'll week. see. If, we'll see if it sticks. Yeah, we'll see. If I, you know, the one thing I wasn't sure about is how much blue do I want versus how much of this do I want white. And so I'll just look at it um, this week. And if I decide that I want, you know, more areas of blue then I'll just paint back over it because it's all about layering anyways. All right, so this door can close. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say though that I'm doing a lot of layering and this is not a tight fit for the doors and the drawers on this piece. If it was, I might have to sand um, the frame a little bit so that they close, but I don't have a tight fit on these. So I'm able to add all these layers and not worry about my doors and drawers being a tight fit. Random, but have you ever used Bad Ace? Yes, Bad Ace brush soap. I did a, a, a live with brush cleaning, what, last month, I think. And, and I did you show- You wanna go do another one? I did show Bad Ace on there. Yeah, my sink's all clean now. I do like that brush soap. I use it more from, um, um, versus a daily cleaner, I use it more for my heavy duty <coughs> cleaning. So. If I've got a brush that's really sat, um, I do like it. It will do daily cleaning, but for daily cleaning, I just mostly use water. I don't even need a lot of brush soap. What's the brush again? The um, S50? These are the Klingon S50, and these are... <coughs> sorry, hang on. Oh my gosh, I can't, even, can't take you anywhere. Um, these are available through Wiseau. Wiseau is the U.S. distributor for Klingon brushes. So Klingon is a separate company, but Wiseau distributes the brushes for them. So I get these from Wiseau Paints also, which is the brand of paint that I'm using. Um, Sorry, guys, for the camera being shaky. And I got a whole bunch of brushes, and there's some different ones that I like for different things. Like I do like Annie Sloan has really nice natural bristle brushes. So when I used natural bristle, I did have hers out tonight. These are all Annie Sloan brushes. Um, so I do, I really like Annie Sloan's natural bristle brushes. Um, who else has a nice synthetic bristle brush? Hang on, I'm going to go grab a couple out of my drawer. No, no. Okay, sorry. No, it, we'll talk about brushes for a second. Here's a couple others that I really like, and I'll tell you why I like them. These are all synthetic bristle brushes. So these here are from Stallmeister. Stallmeister also makes a really nice brush. I would say as far as quality, nice, good brushes, Stallmeister and Klingon probably run neck and neck for me but I have a bigger collection of Klingon. I only have a few Stallmeister brushes. They're just a really nice, soft brush, and I like soft brushes. So Stallmeister, beautiful brushes. These are available from Fusion Mineral Paint, and I do I do really like their brushes. Um, this brush here is from Crystal Lac. Man, these are awesome brushes. It's a super flat brush, but these are soft. Uh, these are nice for putting on clear coats, um, I love these for detailing because they're a thinner brush. So these crystal lac brushes, 
are amazing. Um, and then these are just a couple of economy options. This one's from Amazon. It's from Rolling Dog. And these are nice brushes. I was pretty impressed with these. I think they were two for like $10. So uh, I haven't had it for a long period of time where I can say how it's going to hold up for longevity and cleaning. But uh, for an economy brush, I thought these were nice from Rolling Dog. So I use these sometimes. And then always forever faithful. These are just Wooster shortcut brushes. They're like $5.99 at any hardware store. They're a great starter brush. They will lay on a nice coat of paint. You can blend with them. The only thing I found with these is they, they don't hold up as long. It's a $5 brush. So, uh, you know, if you're just doing a few pieces, they're great. But for longevity, um, I, I would say, yeah, probably, probably Wooster is not great for longevity. But they're nice, you know, they're a nice starter brush. So that kind of gives you a little bit of a range of a brush. Okay, let's blend this drawer out. So on this one here, I started with around the edges and I'm gonna do the same here. This is a graphic slate from Wise Owl, which is kind of a dark blue gray. And I'm just gonna outline this drawer and I'm doing the same thing. I'm not getting full coverage. I'm letting some of that blue and even that white peek through. And I'm just gonna give myself a basic outline and I kind of rounded in those corners a little bit to give myself a little bit of a frame. And then I'm just gonna soften this edge. And that gives me a little bit of a um, overlap that I can blend my color, my next color into. So that just gave me the basic frame. And then I, I'm gonna come back with my medium blue. And I'm just gonna lay this on. I had a solid uh, coat of that blue underneath that was just for coverage over the white. Again, that texture is going to help me because I don't need this to be perfect. And then I'm gonna come back with my brush from my graphic slate. And now that I've got wet paint for both of those colors, I'm gonna kind of work these two together. I'm using a little bit of a tapping motion this is not a perfectly smooth blend. It's going to have a little bit of a texture to it. I'm gonna get a little tiny bit of paint on my brush just because I've got a spot here that's kind of light. And anywhere that I feel is light, I can always just freshen that up with some new paint. And then I'll come back and Oh, it's like I did it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So honestly, texture is kind of a lifesaver. If you stress about, about blending, that texture will hide a lot for you. It was more of a compliment for you, since I'm a blending genius. <laughs> I figured that was how you meant it. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I just dipped the tips of my bristles in a little bit of this um, ivory from Moisel, and I'm going to give myself a little bit of the white. That was probably a little more of the white than I wanted because now I have to kind of work it in. It's a little too white. Yeah, that was more white than I wanted. Using a kind of a swirling, a little bit of tapping. And then I'm gonna, this is my darkest brush, the Graphic Slate. I'm gonna darken that up again. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Not too much because I don't want the, the paint to get into all those low points of the, you know, that I kind of skipped over when I was brushing my paint on. Probably doesn't matter because I'm going to distress back through these layers anyways. But that's going to be kind of my blend that I do. So what do we think? With the white borders around it, the center would be done. How does it look? I'm, the only part I'm questioning is whether I want to keep all this white. Do we like that? Let's see you. All right, let's come over and I'm going to do this door and drawer next. Just because this one has some wet paint on it because I painted on that one first, but this one's all dry. And random, I hope everybody's staying safe that's in the States. Got the crazy uh, cold oh weather going gosh. on. I heard, I was listening to the radio today. How dare and you? And they were talking about uh, what was going on the weather that was... And it was like freezing cold temperatures. I mean, it was worst case scenario for just about everything. Well, if we're I wanna, still going to stay on that side. 
I want to turn this at a and little bit it? of an angle. Yeah. Oh, I would have just stayed where it was awkward. This Sorry, is a guys. really heavy piece. So it's hard to move. Oh. Oh, Sherry, bless your heart. What? <laughs> Did I create and paint at the event too? Um, you know, Sean I created did molds. It. Sean did. He did. He poured, <laughs> Just he poured, poured a molds. lot of resin. He poured a lot of resin. We poured resin in the class, but to get the volume that we needed, we had to pre-pour a lot of it. So him and my son poured a lot of resin. You guys, I want to say a thank you to Sherry. Um, Sherry sent us some things for Christmas and I was super touched by, I don't know, just the thought of it, the thoughtfulness. And Sherry's always been so thoughtful um, and so kind and so supportive. And so I just want to shout out to Sherry and say thank you for your friendship. Yes, thank you. Um, it saves my sanity too. I'm still, thank you. I'm still withholding it all from my kids and they hate me for it. <laughs> but I well, figure... I was the hair dryer master. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Hair dryers because classes always require dry time, and so we uh, we had Sean and my my oldest son were drying things for people. Um, Fun stuff. I don't know. So you guys, um, I don't know any feedback that you guys have on classes. I always welcome that. If there's things you think we could have done better that you wish we would have covered. Uh, and every Ooh, time we'll get negative a negative seventeen better. in Colorado. Oh, I would just move. Yeah. yeah, like don't live there. I'm I think you kind of have to play on words, but I think you have to keep moving, right? Like it's so dang cold, you cannot yeah, sit do still. Yeah, not hold still. Okay, so I got some blue down here onto my white paint, so that'll just be a spot that I have to touch up. And I'm gonna do the same thing on here. I w I prefer doing it over having uh, with that base coat of blue, and but here I'm gonna do it over the straight white. I don't think it'll really matter. A whole lot. Sherry said you made her teary-eyed. Oh, Sherry. You're most welcome. Uh, Sherry, don't, you know if we were in person, I'd be crying right along with you. Um, I got some super sweet gifts at the class, too. Uh, I got Christmas ornaments. I hung those. We hung those on the tree. Um, and they're super pretty. The kids loved them because they all had their names on them. So that was really fun. Um, just really really cool stuff some creative stuff somebody brought me um ketchup chips from canada who has these ketchup chips where they like i've we've never we had never had ketchup chips before the kids didn't hate them i don't like ketchup anyway so i think they just sound disgusting i hard passed on the ketchup chips it didn't taste bad but yes i think you'd have to kind of like ketchup too. yeah I mean, and you I, open the bag and the aroma is truly ketchup. I'm already not a fan. It already sounds like an awful torture to me. Sherry's got my number. She knows, uh, like the sweets. <laughs> I'll stick with the sweets. Okay, so that was my medium blue that I mixed a little bit of the River Rock with vintage duck egg. And now this is just the pure vintage duck egg. Uh, pure vintage duck egg has a little bit of a green undertone to it. You guys were kind of noticing that last week. Alabama on the Gulf side, it's 15 degrees. Whoa! Or it's going to be. Wow. And you guys just got done like having hurricanes. Seriously. And stuff. Like, you haven't Surprise! Even had a break. Yeah. Hold my beer. All right, I'm getting getting a little bit of water because I don't want to add paint, but I just need to keep this in play. And then I'm going to work around this outside. Looks a little bit messy. Oh, Cindy says 14 in Texas, East Texas. Texas too. Well, because I saw we have some friends that are down in uh, Katy, and I did see oh. they were posting, you know, as far as uh, freeze issues and how to, you know, go around your house and prevent the, you know, anything issues on your house, which I thought were, you know, good safety tips because you definitely don't want to be doing it in the middle yeah. of, you know. Sean always <laughs> does that, like if we're getting a rain or whatever, he'll be like, oh, and he goes outside and, you know, has to figure out what did we leave out, what's going to, what do we have to cover? Dang it, I left the kids outside again. I gotta go get them. So this is my basic blend. I've got spots of that white still peeking through. I'm gonna leave those. And then I'm, I took a little bit of the white on my brush and I'm just gonna give myself that little bit of a highlight in the center, right over the top of the blue. Cause I don't wanna lose that blue. I just wanna lighten it. So how's that look? This one probably needs a little more white to it. Now I kinda like that. It has a little more white wow. to it. I'm just gonna add this. Lynn, yeah. Uh, I saw 
she mentioned uh, it's negative 35 in Wyoming. Or negative, here we go, Kathy, negative 18 in, East Mon- oh, in eastern Montana. And I saw a, a meme the other day that was talking about, um, oh, what's that? Yellowstone. Everybody wants to live the Yellowstone life until they experience their first winter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so for that, I just added a little bit of that white into the center. And then I just brushed a little bit of the vintage duck egg into it. Again, they don't have to be perfect because I'm going to tear this up next week. Okay, I'll do this drawer here, and then I think I'll have a pretty good um, grip on, I'll, I'll make the sides match, and when we come back next week, we'll start tearing these layers back, and in my head, uh, that's gonna, we'll start seeing all this layers of paint that I've added. Huh. Carly says they have better Smarties in Canada. What? They are chocolate and M&Ms. Oh, is that, what, what was that other candy that she bought? Was that Smarties? It, was, was that, Car- I don't think it was Carly the... Maybe no, 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 no. But, it was but from, yeah, there were there were Smarties, they, they Smarties? Um, but they were. I thought, I thought they, they were the, like the old school Smarties that we I haven't seen in decades. I know I'd have decades. to go look. I'd have to go look at the package because now I can't remember. And um, were they in that box? I can't remember. I no, them. I think I. Well, no, I. Sorry, you kind of have to hide now candy from the kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Since we'll go in the house and they'll all be see as wrappers or they yeah. got like the powder around their They're lips. They're in there alone right now and they're supposed to be eating dinner. They, they're probably just eating Halloween they're, candy yeah, though. They're probably chewing on a table leg and something else. I can't remember. Oh, you know no, what? I they're think, not in there because I packed yeah. it with the food when we came home. That's how I whittle in the house. So I just, just throw my table This is just a dry brush. This is my medium color, which I mixed in a little bit of that uh, River Rock and Vintage Duck Egg. And now the Pure Vintage Duck Egg is what I've got in the center. Not much paint, letting some of that white peek through. Because when I'm layering paint, I want to have different ways of layering it. So I've showed you three different ways of getting texture. Uh, the, the first one was adding the salt wash into my paint and that gave me some rough texture. The second one was putting my paint off and on and then putting a little bit of the dry salt wash on top of it and sandwiching it in the paint. And that gives you a different texture. And then when I'm putting the paint on like this and I'm not covering it fully, that's going to give me a, yet another type of texture. Um, some other ideas on texture, if you dry your paint with a heat gun you can cause some cracking in there so that's another way you can take a look like this and get all because you, you don't want it to be just a consistent texture throughout i'm trying to get kind of a messy inconsistent look um so i want to create all these different textures and you'll see as we keep going this is going to be a uh, kind of a complex look but um i'm going to add crackle i think and the waxes and uh, the distressing, I got a piece of hair in there. Uh, it looks like mine, we're safe. If it was somebody else's, I'd be worried. Um, so doing all that different types of texture is gonna make it more interesting. And I added that little bit of white in the middle. It's not a smooth blend, I'm kind of doing a little bit of tapping. And I can see some of the white peeking through. So I think that one's good too. So how do we feel about the white border around the blue? Is it working? I'm going to come back here and get the edges of this door. Again, I'm not going to cover the white completely. And I'm going to do something different on the insides. Probably a paper, I think. Got some pretty textured wallpapers that could work. I don't know. I'll do something. So it doesn't really matter if I'm getting the paint around the door. Um, I'm not too worried about that. White border. You like the white border? Does it look good? Because my other option was that I paint some of this blue or all of it blue, but we like the two-tone. Do you know I use you guys to help make my decisions because I'm super indecisive? Me, and then you just do the opposite? <laughs> yeah, I asked John what I should do, and then whatever he says, I don't do that. All right, so this I'm... Coming in here, and I want to get a nice clean edge of this dark blue. And same it's kind thing. of like a magic, a, a magic eight ball in the house. Yeah, it yeah. is just like that. Uh huh. I'm gonna chunk some of this white onto the hinges. That's where I get my financial advice. Although I'm now I'm thinking the hinges should maybe be blue. I think they'd make more sense in the blue. So guess what? I let that dry, and I come right over it because it's all about layers. 
right, got that edge and I'll do this one blue. Yeah, they make more sense in the dark, huh? I'm glad we decided that. Thanks, Paula. She sent a hundred stars. Thank you. Um, okay, so I think this is where we're going to stop for the week and I will pick this up. I'll pick, carry it onto the side. So when you, when we get back next week, I'll have all of it done in this soft blend that we did on these doors and we'll start peeling all of these layers back. And I think get the transfer on and start some of our antiquing on this. That's what my plan is. So it's kind of fun, but it's all about building up those layers and you're going to start with colors that are not what you want on your final look because those will just be what peeks through from underneath the paint. I'm getting these hinges in the dark blue and I do like them better dark. They make more sense in the dark. This one I need to make, I need to wait for it to dry now because I put that white paint on there. Um, so those are some tips. Uh, use texture as a cheater way if you struggle with blending. Um, textured finishes, if your piece has flaws or imperfections in it, use texture to your advantage because it can create all these beautiful looks and it hides a lot. This one didn't have, I'm not using it to hide on this one. I just really wanted to achieve a finish, but those are just some tips on how you can use texture. How come nobody told me I didn't get this drawer side? So I'll get all that and when we come back next week, I'll have it. Just uh, mesmerized, that's all. And that it is, it is like oddly satisfying to watch somebody else paint. Oh, I totally agree. But here's the thing. I hate people watching me paint. <laughs> I hate painting. So it works it out that you so paint. I so anxious. I feel so much pressure. Like when people are watching me paint, I'll procrastinate. And then I get even more indecisive because I feel more anxious uh, in person. When it's on camera, it's like you don't notice it. Um, all right, you guys. So I'll get this. And, and next week when we come back, we should oh, have Oh, Don says you missed white. the drawer side. Oh, I, I probably did. I'll, I'll get it all cleaned up. Probably this, I can't see over there. Now we point it out. This one's not done. The sides aren't done. I'll get it all caught up. I'm also making a YouTube video for this. So when, I'm, when I don't do like a side on camera, it means that I'm getting that for YouTube later. Um, so it'll all be wrapped up in a nice little bow in like 15 minutes. But these live videos are meant to be more in depth. I'll describe the process more. So uh, you get you get all the steps condensed in a YouTube video, but the live videos give you more talking through it. Okay, so come back next week. We are going to tear this piece apart because I want it to look distressed and old. We're going to take this texture. It's actually going to end up smooth when I'm done. That's what's going to be kind of crazy. Come on back. All right, you guys, um, I do have a YouTube video coming out this week. Uh, it's kind of a cool process, project. It's totally different. It's um, I'm looking at it right now. It's holiday decor, and it's really fun. So check out my YouTube channel, and um, you guys have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas everyone. Next time I see you guys, it will be after Christmas. Um, what I want for Christmas is wool socks, because my feet are cold <laughs> all the time right now. So if you know good wool socks, send me a link. Sean refuses to kick the heat up. Yeah. No, it's just my feet. The rest of me is fine. My feet are freezing. So anybody who has good tips on really nice, good Well, it's because the kids socks. are at school all day. Yeah. Yeah. So I just need good socks. Like thick wool, nice socks, boot socks. Give me some socks, guys. You want like right. pre-done holes in the socks? Or? <laughs> no, I have those. I just have regular crew socks, but they're, you know, but I, I don't know. I want thick. You thick have enough, like socks. double, like layers. No, not two socks. That's ridiculous. No. I want one sock. That was a good movie. Job. You two, even, two socks? You won't even catch that. All right. I'm pretty I will let you guys go. I'm going to go clean these brushes in my newly cleaned out sink. Yes. And I will catch you guys next week after you've had a Merry Christmas with your family. Merry, Merry Thank Christmas. You, everybody. Merry Christmas.